Hello everyone, this is Daniel, and you are watching Coin Help You's latest video. This video is about the top 10 Roosevelt dimes that you can find in pocket change. Now these coins have some value to them, some of them have a little more value than you would think. And I know it's just Roosevelt dimes. Most people don't seem to want Roosevelt dimes. Well, if you found a silver dime from 64 and back, you'd be happy. But it's only going to be worth about $1.20 right now if it's circulated. So it's basically maybe even melt. But you're still excited about finding it. Well, all of these are worth more than that. And you can still find them in your change. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do the best to help you identify them. I'm also going to show you how much they're worth. And like I said, you can still find these in your change. So, stay tuned. What I'm going to do is a little something different in this video. I'm going to start at number 10 and I'm going to work my way down to 1. Also, this is going to be part 1 of 2. The next video I do on Roosevelt Dimes is going to cover 1946 to 1964. So click the little bell beside the subscribe button so you get a notification when that video comes out. First, we're going to start off with the 1996 West Point Mint Roosevelt Dime. It does have a W on it. It's the first coin minted by the West Point Mint for the dime. These were put in mint sets, but some have been cut out and it's possible to still find one of these in your change. So look for the W. It will be worth a little more than face value. This one here is graded Mint State 68 with full bands, meaning that the reverse fully split bands on it, fully struck. That's what that means. Next is the 1968 Double Dive Verse. This coin has sold for $159 on eBay. And what you want to look for on this, you see right here in the six, and on the nine, you can see a little bit in that area. And when you're looking at these, and I'm going to show you this a little bit later, a die deterioration, all these die striations, and all that on these coins. There's a lot of them on Roosevelt dimes, and it's easy to mistake it for a double die when it's not. But the most obvious way on this one here is to look at the date. And you can see this right here. That's a little right down the middle of it. 1970 has a double die reverse. It's the 801. Now there's two for this year in mint mark. This is the least of the two. And here is an example of what I was showing you or talking about in the last uh, comment. This one, you can see doubled areas, but the thing about that is you've also got some, what they call ejection slide. It's where the, the die actually scraped onto the coin when it was ejected. You've got all, a little bit of die wear here. You've got some die striation lines. And one of the things about that is a lot of people mistake this for the double die. They see this and they think that has to be the double die. But in reality, if you look at the, an image that doesn't have that, a newer die state, that's basically a late die stage. So when you look at an early die stage like this one, then you can actually see more clearly where it's doubled. And you don't see all those lines and you don't see all, you've got some die, die lines here where the die was prepared, but you can actually see the, the doubled features and you don't see all the, the ejection sliding or the strike doubling that you see on that. And that's one of the things that uh, people mistake very often. I see it a lot. And we'll go back and we'll look at that again. You see the U here? See how different it is, how much better it uh, is struck? And then come over here and we're going to look at the actual double features as well. And go back to this side here. You see what I mean? You can see the difference. Because this one has a little bit of wear. It doesn't look exactly like the early die stage. So you got to be careful. you got to look really close. The next one is a 2004D doubled ear. And this one, I'm going to bring it up here. Do you see that little area right here? Right behind the ear. That's where the ear is doubled. This one's not extremely rare, but it's actually kind of neat to, to find something like that. 
see if I can show you here. It's right here. That that's the double deer. They call it the curve. It sold for eighty dollars in Mint State sixty two at eBay, and here's the values down here. Next is the nineteen eighty two No P. These here can you know three hundred some dollars. They're basically anywhere from a hundred some dollars and up. You can find one of those in your change. Also, you have a 2017 plane, and this is the double die reverse. This is more of a modern one here. You see thickness of the letter, but you can see just a little bit of the doubled line there where it's, it was doubled. It's a thicker. Right here, you can see it. Might be hard to see it in these images. I apologize for that. Really, the only images I have to show you of this one. But you know, it's a 2017. Here you have the 1964. Of D over D, which is a RPM, a repunch mint mark. They actually hand punched the mint marks into the dies up until uh, 1990. Um, this one here is kind of valuable, $282. That's what it sold for, uh, this one here, because it was 66 full bands. You know, as I explained, you know, the full bands are fully struck. And that's what that means. Really can't show you too much, but there's a little bit here you can see. Wish I had a better image of it, but just you know, look for an extra met mark, basically. Another met mark that was punched underneath the other one. Here's one that might surprise some of you. Uh, this one is an actually a 1969 with reverse of 68. This is the FS901. Now there's the, also the 1970 is known for a reverse of 68 as well. And what you're looking for, it's actually a proof reverse. You see these lines that are in the torch? The flames, well, when you look at one that's normal, this is what it looks like. They're not very pronounced. And see, this is the proof reverse. You can really see those lines in here. The lines are just heavier. And when you see that on a 69 or a 1970 Roosevelt dime, then you have the reverse of a 68. It's basically a proof reverse. Some of these are sold, as far as values are concerned, you know, they have, um, they can actually be worth a little bit of money. You know, price guide's got this one at $60, and it uh, graded 62 And last but not least, a 1965 Roosevelt dime struck on a silver planchet, and this one was circulated. This one made it into circulation, and it was worth $8,625 is what it sold for. And you always want to look at your 65s. Um, you can look on the edges and see there's cladding, but if you see one that doesn't have that, maybe weigh it out and see if it weighs right. See if it sticks to a magnet, you know, you might have something. So you never know with, if a stray planchet or got in there and was struck by the 1965 dies. Another thing I want to show you is to get on Konica Variety Vista and you want to look at the Roosevelt Dimes. There's some more you can find uh, to look up the RPMs as well. Also, Wexler has a list. I didn't cover every single one of them. Uh, this is just the top 10 that I picked out I wanted to show you. So I hope this helped you learn a few things to look for in your Roosevelt Dimes and give you something else to, to you know, cross your eyes over. But anyways, thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, and comment, and have a great day.